ಶರಣೀಯದರ್ಶನ ಮಂದಹಾಸರುಚಿರಾರ್ನಾಂಬುಜ ಪೂಜಿ ಸುರನರೋತ್ತಮೈರ್ಮುದ ಧರ್ಮನಂದನಮಹಂ ವಿಚಿಂತ ಶ್ರೀಗಣಶ್ಯಾಂ ಮಹಾರಾಜನೀ ಜಯ ಸುಪ್ರೀಮ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈಟಿ ಔಡ್ ಬಿಲ್ ಔಡ್ ಘನಶ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಪಾತ್ಮಿಕ ಟೋಲ್ ಲಿಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಪೂಜ್ಯ ಪಾತ್ ಗುರುಜಿ ಆನ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಡ್ಯೂಟಿಸ್ ಜಯ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಾರಾಯಣ even though the science had invented many many things but still no one can imagine that a person can fly without any kind of uh, like material help is it possible for a human being to fly in the air like that of a bird mostly it's not but for the saints of bhagwan swami narayan there is nothing impossible <coughs> because bhagwan himself said in the vachanamrut like i myself forever resides in the heart of the sun just as i forever reside in my eight types of different murtis in the same way i all i always live in the heart of the saints and as bhagwan himself resides in the heart of a saint so for such a saint there is nothing impossible to do so in the same way sandas ji swami he can fly in the air without any kind of material help or material uh, we can say any means or any objects nothing just he remember the form of bhagwan swami narayan and if he desire to go one place to another and while thinking for that when he remember bhagwan swami narayan's divine form then only because of bhagwan's divine wishes swami's body can fly in the air <coughs> once sri ji marad was seated in gadpur and there he was narrating his own incident like how he himself was coming from divine abode of aksardham to this earth for that he himself narrated to the saints and devotees I took the form of Nar and Narayan when I had decided to come down to this earth and I stay there in Badrik Ashram. While talking those forms, I had accepted the curse of Durvasa Rusi. I always grace all of those abodes with my various forms. For example, in Badrik Ashram, it was the form of Nar Narayan, in Svetip, the form of Vasudev Narayan, in vaikun the form of lakshmi narayan and in galok the form of sri krishna so in this way sri jumara himself narrated his own story like how he himself descended from the divine abode of aksardham not directly from divine abode of aksardham to earth but for that he came via badrikasram there there was a story before bhagwan's birth like uh when all of the rushis they were listening the divine discourses from nar and narayan rushi and uh so they were not aware of anything else and at the at the same time durvasa rushi came from behind and so no one could uh knew about his arrival and that's why no one welcome him and because of that durvasa became very angry and he cursed the whole assembly and th- that was also because of bhagwan's desire because bhagwan himself wanted to come down to this earth but in aksardham there there is no any kind of like situation happen never happen 
not only that but even in the aksar dham there is no such kind of feelings like anger or thirst or hunger or ego jealousy no nothing nothing that kind of things in aksar dham and that's why bhagwan swamina himself came to the form of nar and narayan and that while taking that form bhagwan himself accepted the curse of durvasa and then he also according to the curse of durvasa rishi bhagwan himself become as human so that was the story before bhagwan's birth and he himself narrated this to the devotees in front of him in garuda so after narrating this sri ji maharaj himself explain how hard or how like just near impossible to reach to the badrik ashram by any human and because of that he himself said to sandas ji swami and he also understood maharaj wishes and because of that he also bowed down to maharaj and he received blessings from maharaj and departed from there but badrikashram is a divine place situated in the magnificent himalayas where no humans can go the snow covered mountain peaks are secure with boundaries on all sides in the form of a celestial river which turns everything into stone whether that be a human body or wooden boat so no one can cross this huge this large river by any kind of means no boat nothing no one can cross that river even no one can touch the water of that river because that was the magnificent meaning that was the divine river and that was the creation of divine so no one can touch it why because everything turns into a stone while come into contact with the water of that river due to these great sages named the river as patra nadi or we can say the stone river why because everything turn into the stone that's why it call as a stone river no one can cross the river except one who is specially blessed by the supreme lord only the chosen one can reach the other bank to meet the sages of badrikashram no one else so sandas ji swami he had blessings from the supreme lord and proceed towards the himalayas as he did not know where badrikashram was and how to go there he merely used his unique method what was his unique method he just remember bhagwan's divine form he just closed his eyes and within a seconds that very form appear and guided him towards the destination however swami was not in samadhi even though his eyes were closed but still he was not in samadhi he was alive he was in like full consciousness of his body but this uh, miracle happens because of bhagwan's divine wishes so with his physical body he was flying through the air so in a very short time santdas ji crossed some of the peaks of the himalayas and arrived at the stone river why because he was not flying in the air like like that of the birds but even he had like magnificent speed while flying and that's why within very short time he he crossed the all of the de- uh, distance from the gujarat to the himalaya there were like thousands of miles and still he can cross within very short period of time the form of god disappeared from uh after crossing some of the peaks of the himalayas and Ar- swami arrived at the stone river the form of god disappeared from his vision now swami was alone he was uh, he took a wooden stick and dug it 
into the river to check the water level. So before crossing, before entering the water, Swami wanted to check its uh, water level, how deep the river was. So when he used a stick and he dipped the wooden stick into the water, then he cannot like move his stick. So uh, he bent down like he was thinking on which creature could have possibly clutched the stick within its mouth. So while thinking, so Swami was, Swami bent down to observe what happened and found the stick turned to stone. So now Swami understood that this is the stone river. Why? Because he had learned through the scriptures the description of the Badrikasram written in the scriptures. So he found like this is a stone river. And then he found like I was, uh, I'm like near the Badrikasram. When I cross this river, then I enter to, to the territory of Badrikasram. But to cross the river is very difficult. Now Swami moved further away and thought to cross by remembering Bhagwan Swaminarayan's form. However, this time Bhagwan did not appear as before. Instead, as he remembered Bhagwan's form, this time four divine sages came there and asked Swami, Where do you want to go? Then Sandas Swami replied, I want to go to Badrikasram. The sages said, We are going there. If you want to come with us, close your eyes. This kind of incident even happened today in the Himalayas. The great sages, they were living even in the Himalayas from, uh, from like thousands of years. And they were alive. Even they were living today in human body. In the same body they possessed before like thousands of years. So, Sandas Swami, he made some of such a divine sages. And even sages, they asked him where he wanted to go. So Swami wanted to go to Badrikasram and the sages instructed him to close his eyes. And Sandhas Swami did so. And after a while, with the instruction of the sages, he opened them again. So first the sages instructed Swami to close his eyes. So as Sandhas Swami closed his eyes, then, after a while, again, the sages commanded him to open his eyes. Then, Sandhaji Swami opened. Then, the miracle happened. As before, he closed his eyes. There was a river in front of his eyes. Now, after a while, after closing his eyes, now again, when he opened his eyes, at the time, nothing like a river in front of him. Instead, there were like greenery and landscapes and like huge trees. In this way, like totally different scene in front of him. He was a different view. Uh, he saw a different view and received a new experience of a very different as atmosphere. They were now 30 miles from the Stone River. So, within a friction of seconds these divine sages not only guided but they carried Swami's body not only crossing the river but even the they reached like 30 miles away from the stone river after that they were like walking while walking along various food paths Swami heard some of uh, like some many people gather and they were chanting Vedic hymns in perfect harmony. The magical quality of those chant floating through the air transformed the landscape into a scene of unimaginable beauty. So on inquiry, Sandhaji learned that 
this was badrik ashram where narayan rishi is situated their ashram so when sandas ji swami asked those sages where we we are right now then they explain swami like you are in badrik ashram and that's why you are feeling something divine in your heart so as sandas ji swami along with the other four rishis arrived there narayan and rishi both rose from their seats and came forward to receive their special guests sandas ji swami narayan narayan rishi first moved before sandas ji swami and in turn sandas ji embraced both rishis with great affection both narayan narayan experienced great joy beyond their imagination and so after honoring swami they guided him towards a grass hut in that hut the rishis had swami seat on a particular seat they even garlanded swami with colorful fragrant smelling flowers and narasi came with holy water of the ganges of the ganga river and i gave it to swami to drink after that they, they offered some variety of ripe and delicious fruits swami ate some of them and uh swami ate some of the fruit after offering them to bhagwan after that sandaji swami gave a smile and said actually no uh, after that nar and nara and rishi they both sat in front of swami and while folding their hands they requested please explain to us the immense glory and greatness of the supreme lord swami narayan as he is right now performing his divine uh, life episode with his uh, thousands of santos and bhaktos in uh, as human fo- uh, in human form so please narrate his divine incidents also describe us what he is performing in various charitras with his dear devotees and saints sandaji swami gave a smile and said actually no one can describe the divine incidents of bhagwan completely also you know the glory and greatness of bhagwan swami narayan yet i am delighted to have a chance to explain the glory and divine power of my beloved maharaj then sandaji generated divine incidents everyone was entirely focused in the narration of divine episodes of bhagwan swami narayan so in this way even the great sages of the Nar- uh, badrikasram as well as nar and narayan rishi they both even eagerly requested swami to describe the divine incident of bhagwan swami narayan so that was the supremacy of bhagwan swami narayan why because in all of different divine abodes all of the sages all of the divine muktos they all desire to listen the divine incident of bhagwan swami narayan and here sandas ji swami narrated one after one the divine incidents of bhagwan swami narayan to the assembly in the badrik ashram Narayan announced in the assembly that Badrik Ashram is very lucky to welcome this noble saint as a representative of the Supreme Lord Swami Narayan. As we have a chance to have a darshan of this great saint Sandas Ji Swami here in Badrik Ashram, so by his darshan we can have a fruits equivalent to have a darshan of Bhagwan Swami Narayan himself. in this way he narrated swami's glory then he introduced and that is swami to the other rishis so understanding swami's glory all of them came forward one after another to bow down to swami so in this way even the great sages of badrik ashram they even uh gave too much honor to swami as they understood like swami's greatness because they even even though they desire to have a darshan of bhagwan swami narayan every day but still they can't have a chance to do darshan of bhagwan swami narayan every day on the other hand 
Sandhya Ji Swami had a chance to have darshan, uh, have a chance to listen Bhagwan's voice, even have a chance to talk with Bhagwan. In this way, he had a chance to have a company of Bhagwan Swami every day, and that's why they understood Swami's glory, and because of that, they bowed down to Swami. And after after all of these things, they listened. The divine incident of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. Not only that, but he, uh, they also listen the greatness and divine power of Bhagwan Swami Narayan. What Bhagwan Swami Narayan was doing in a human form in Garuda and in the various parts of country, and how he was like transform the wild persons into very virtuous one. In this way, he explained everything to the great sages of Badrikasram and they also uh, listened attentively the greatness and glory of Bhagavan Swami Narayan. So in this way, Sandhasi Swami stayed there for six months and explained all of the divine incidents to the great sages of Badrikasram. Then once Swami desired to go to Man Sarur from Vadrikasram. Why? Because in a him in a Nilkantvarni form, Bhagwan Swamina had also stay at the lake of Man Sarur for five days and he took a bath in the holy Man Sarur and that's why uh, Swami desired to touch that holy water because the water touched by Bhagwan himself and that's why he wanted to go there. So Naren Narendra instructed him, you want to go to the sacred lake Mansur. However, I suggest you, you should not bathe in the lake since the water is freezing cold. So at that time, Sandhaji Swami said, it's okay, I'll not touch the water. But the four rishis guide Sandhaji Swami on the uh, divine path towards Mansarur. Within no time, they arrived at the bank of Mansarur. There, they saw that there were thousands of lotus in freezing waters of the sacred lake. Not only that, but many swans were swimming graciously. So Swami was surprised to see a group of swans swimming happily in the bone chilling cold water so how is it possible uh, so uh, if the water was very cold meaning freezing cold and on the other hand the swans they were floating they were swimming in the water so how is it possible so Sandhaji Swami decided in his mind if the swan can swim in the water so it's nothing harmful for me I can also swim I can also take a bath in this lake so even the races they advise Sandhaji Swami not to go into the chill water however Sandhaji did not follow their advice and went in anyway as he came out after taking bath in into the holy lake Mansarur when he coming out from the water, Swami fell down unconscious because of freezing cold water. So all of the rishis became worried and decided to carry Swami's unconscious body to Badrikasram. Upon returning, they lit fire to provide warmth. Uh, once Swami regained consciousness, he turned and bowed to Nar Narayan Rusi. Then. After that incident, Sandhaji Swami stayed there for a month and a half and he told the divine incidents of Supreme Lord Swaminarayan to the great rishis of Patrikasaram. And then once Naranara and Rusi, they suggested to Swami, now we understand that the only Supreme Authority, the Supreme Lord of Lords, the cause of all causes, Bhagavan Swaminarayan is performing his divine charitra in Gujarat. So it is our humble request to you that since we are not allowed to go there 
to be a part of Bhagwan's divine episode so that you have a chance to witness Bhagwan's divine charitras in human form. So please return there and enjoy the divine darshan of Bhagwan Swaminarayan on behalf of us. So in this way, when the all of the great sages and their master Nar and Narayan Dusi, they requested Swami to go back. So Swami also he prostrated before Nar and Narayan Dusi in the morning and uh, revealed his desire to go back to Maharaj. Everyone gathered for the last meeting with Swami and farewell to Swami. So they bow down with tears bearing from their eyes and Nar and Narayan Dusi, they made arrangements to cross the stone river. So again, the four races were ready to go with Swami to get him, get him across the river with heavy hearts everyone gave Swami a farewell. So in this way, after staying there for more than six months, Swami again coming back from the Badrik Ashram. So this is what the impossible became possible. Why? Because Bhagwan Swami and himself said, I forever reside in the heart of the sun. And because of that, sun is the form of Bhagwan. And that's why it is possible for Sandhaji Swami to cross even the Himalayas, not only that, but even cross the Stone River, which is not possible for any human. So this is all happened because of Bhagwan Swaminarayan's divine wishes and his divine power. So by listening, by reading such kind of divine incidents, such kind of divine miracles, we can understand Bhagwan's divine glory like how our Bhagwan Swamina is divine not only that but how our Bhagwan Swamina is the supreme and merely by understanding his nature as a su supreme lord of lords we can cross the river of our life and death by his divine power so by uh, the grace of great saints like Sandaji Swami as well as uh, the great Sadhguru or Puja Guruji, we can also try to understand Bhagwan's divine glory as it is and by understanding Bhagwan's nature as a supreme God, we can also cross many of our like distance from, uh, from our heart and because of that, Bhagwan also resides in our heart and he can, uh, like, he himself guide us through our destination to Aksardam. By saying this, my humble Jai Swaminarayan.